Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We are in the building. Listen, it's another one of them ones. Y'all know I don't play when it comes to these entrepreneurs, bro. Y'all know I'm not playing all these self proclaimed gurus. Everybody swear they the best and they not. But I tell you, I give you the platform. And it's either show that you know what you're talking about or you don't. And I think we've been doing pretty good, man. We got a lot of entrepreneurs that have been coming up, giving game, and we've been learning from it. So uh, special guest in the building, my guy Siam is here. How you doing? What's up, man? Let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. Thank you, man. It's my pleasure. Uh, um, you've been doing real estate for a long time. 13 years? 15 years. 15 years. You don't even play the internet games. So nah. you ain't one of them ones. Nah, man. I was out there <laughs> grinding, running the business, growing the business. Facts. And, um, you know, only recently got on social media, man. Mm. What made you want just do it all of a sudden? Pull your mic closer. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, over the last 15 years, I did over 1,300 real estate deals. Damn. Right? So I'm telling you, when I said that we was out there grinding, my, my brothers, myself, my partner Jonah, all of us were out there just, just hitting the pavement, doing deals across the entire country from Atlanta to Fort Lauderdale to Jersey to, you know, Cleveland and Columbus, Ohio. I mean, we just, we, we go hard. And I said, you know, I want to take what I'm doing and show other people how to do the same thing, right? Because I truly believe that everyone has should have the opportunity to get in the game and change their life. Well, also, you make more money the more people you help too, though. Absolutely. Like, come Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Everybody goes always, around, comes around. Yeah, Bro, if I, put, if I put mad money in your pocket, it should come back around. For sure, 100%. You know but I just feel like everybody always, they always go into, like, I just want to help everybody. Like, I mean, you make more money, too, when you help people. Of course, Let's be brother. real. Right? That's, that's entrepreneurship right there, right? Yeah. It, it, but with the helping people, though, it... I feel like even if you have good intentions, bro, with the best intentions, sometimes it can backfire if you don't do it right. Of course. Of course. Have you seen that? Have you witnessed that sometimes? Yeah, man. Absolutely. I've seen people that I've 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 helped them to try to go and get their first deal, and then they don't follow through in exactly what I tell them. And of course, not every deal is gonna go 100 percent right? right. And they point the blame on you. Hey, but I was like, you didn't do everything I told you. I told you not to give that contractor 50% deposit. And when he ran off on your deposit, right? Now I'm a scammer. Now I'm the one that screwed you. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, so, where do we go? Where do both? Let's look at both sides of it. Sure. Where do the consumer go wrong and even the teacher, or, the, or let's say the student and the teacher, where does both parties go wrong? Yeah, man. So I think on the on the student side, um, everybody's ambitious. Everybody wants to do, you know, 100 deals the first year. Everybody wants to, you know, make a million dollars the first year. And I understand that. I can understand that. However, you know, they say that, that you know, the, you know, the, 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 the tortoise wins the race, right? You ever heard okay. that phrase? Oh, yeah, yeah, Slow yeah. but steady, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that's really true. So the, that would be the that would kind of be that's the um the tortoise is a rabbit, right? Or no? Tortoise is like the is like the turtle. The turtle and, okay. and race okay, is the yeah, rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So the, so yep, the rabbit right. just goes out the gate, just running. They go out, they buy 50 properties year one, and then they, Burn they blow up, up right? Yeah. Um, the tortoise goes slow. He starts off wholesaling. He buys his first property. Then he goes to two properties and he builds up his cash reserves. And then boom, three years later, they got a real estate empire of, you know, 30 rental properties and they're growing. Right. Uh -huh. So that's how I believe everyone should start. And that's how I believe it should go. Right. A lot of people, you give them the information, they want to run. They over leverage themselves. They over, they over, you know, they overdo themselves and then they, they burn out. Okay. Right? So I think on the on the student side, that's how they can do they can go wrong. On the on the mentor side, they don't realize that everybody's different, right? It's not a one a one you know one way fits all situation. So they look they internalize the, how they got success exactly. when they try to get everybody else to do the same. Exactly. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, I can you see that. Mean? So like even myself, my own story, right? I started off flipping um, 15 years ago, buying the homes and selling them in Jersey. Right. And um, and I don't recommend for brand new people to go that route. I actually think brand new people, if you don't have a cash reserve, if you don't have money, you go out there and start wholesaling. Right. Learn how to find properties learn how to analyze properties, understand the entire game. And after you've done five, 10, 15 wholesale deals and you, now you got thirty, forty thousand dollars in the bank, then go out and start fixing and flipping to build to get those bigger checks. But yes, I am. I'm broke and I don't got the time. Uh -huh. Right. I. So you saying go hoax? That take a lot. That's a lot of work to put in. It is. It is work, but everything worth it is. It, it requires some investment, right? That's a fact. You gonna invest yeah. money or you gonna invest time? Facts, right? So, so if no one's gonna do it for you, it's your business, right? Yeah. So you got to put the time. And bro, you can get a deal. You can get a deal in the next thirty days. Just put in thirty minutes a day. Thirty no minutes way. a day in time. Thirty minutes a day in time. Right, give me the play. How, you bro? All right. So you're gonna look out for motivated sellers. So you're gonna go to the courthouse. You're gonna go to the local county, and you're gonna find people that are delinquent on taxes. Okay. Right. And then you're gonna reach out to the people shooting text messages to those people. Right. Send 
50 text messages a day. How long it take a son to take a text message? Not, Not a lot of time. Yeah. You can get your kid to do that, bro. Mm -hmm. Right? Your fifth grader knows how to text message and probably text message faster than me. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and so get them to text message for you. Out of the, if you send, if you send 200 text messages in a week, you will get some good responses, right? You get a lot of FUs, but you also can get some good responses. Right. And all you gotta do is close one in 30 days. How much you usually get off the wholesale? Bro, we've made my, my biggest wholesale no, deal. No, give me regular numbers, bro. I'll give you my biggest, I'll give you my worst, and I'll give okay. you the average. All right, bad, bad, my bad. biggest wholesale deal was 300 grand in one deal, right? It was a commercial property, a multifamily <sighs> deal. The average, I'd say somewhere around $10,000. Okay. But if we make in, if we work in 40, 50 hours a week, Right to make five thousand dollars in a month, you can't take thirty minutes a yeah, day to make yeah. another five or ten thousand dollars. Come man, on, that's man! Crazy. Come on! Why you think people not doing this then? I think they don't know. You only know what you know, right? Bro, all these yo. I'm sorry, nothing against you. It's a thousand real estate guys out there, real estate gurus, people on Instagram, people on social media, YouTube, Twitter. So uh, there's say a they difference, don't know. bro. There's a real estate guru and there's a real estate guru, right? Who? So that was a vibe. There's a, there's a difference, a bro. There's a difference, bro. Right? So you got all these people out there, these fake gurus out there, talking about they in the game, they doing the business. You check their portfolio, they don't own no real estate, right? They might have done five deals. As a matter of fact, I know a girl right now in Atlanta. I won't say no names. I ain't gonna put it out there, right? <laughs> don't play that, with me. Don't yeah. test me, bro. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna say it out there because I know her as a as she's 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 cool people, uh -huh. but she's selling people on how to how to do fix and flipping, and she's only done ten deals. Right, bro. When I was doing fifty deals, I was still learning. When I was doing hundred deals, I was still. I was doing two hundred. I'm still. I'm. I did thirteen hundred deals. Now I still learn stuff. I just came from an event right now in Atlanta, right, which brought me here. Um, and and I, I picked up a couple of nuggets that I think I'm gonna go back and implement my business. It's gonna take it to the next level, right? So I don't believe that if your brand, if you do that, done ten deals, you should be teaching anybody how to do it. You're still a novice. Wow, that's. I mean, that's real though. Yeah. So man. what about um. What about those little auctions, like where you, they have like once a month, you mm -hmm. pull up and you can just put down on there? Yeah. Like, do you, that, so that's a auctions good way. Auctions are cool, yeah, man, that's cool. But you know what? I don't like competing with like JP Morgan. I don't like competing with Wells Fargo, right? They go to those auctions, try to buy. I don't like competing with the hedge funds, right? They got bigger pockets than me and you. Yeah. They're going to outbid us every single time. Yeah, yeah. So you go to an auction, you might win a property, right? I like looking at those properties, going to that auction and reaching out to those people eight weeks before. But Six I thought it was already, already done, though. No, it, it's done at the auction. So if you go to the Fulton County tax auction, you go to the Fulton County foreclosure auction that happens, you know, once a month, right? Um, you you though it's done on that day. But guess what? Up until that that minute of the auction, you could still buy that property from the owner. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Nah, this is we get yeah, into bro. It. See, I told you you had to do the bullshit. This nah, is some real man. shit right there. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> hold bro, up, hold up. I'm just up. teaching what I do every day in my business. I'm not making it up. I didn't go read a book and then and then and then figure it out now. No, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm just ask a simple question. Yo. Yo, I just want to ask a simple question. Don't give me too much of your business. We are on a podcast recording live. So the auction that you put me on with the once a month joint, right? Did you know that you could reach out to the owner of the property? Before the auction and still buy it from him? Did yeah. I say that right? Did I yeah. say it right? Yeah. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I did that a couple times. Wow. He did it a couple times. See? That's crazy. Bro. All, right. All right, bro. Thank you, dog. All right. Is it wait, is it easy to get the, the information? Nah, you gotta just skip trace on. So you gotta have a skip trace on site. There's a lot he of know, skip trace sites out He there. knows, he knows. I, I'll break down Ooh, the entire process. All right, bro. For thank you, bro. You, bro. All right, let's get into it. This right, is see, fire. Bro, it's, he's done it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It just requires a little more work. You get to show up to the auction, you bid. It's easy. You do work for one day, right? But if you reach out to those people six weeks before the auction, eight weeks before the auction, to give you time to you know get your finance in order and put the deal together, right? Um, you know, then then you, it becomes an A B conversation. And then what, it's about to be auctioned off anyway. You might as well just sell it to me. Exactly, be. exactly. And and bro, what I do, I do text messaging. We do cold calling. We do direct mail to those people, right? And Wait, I, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm anxious. I mean, I'm excited now. So at the auction, do, do the owners get paid anything? No, they get nothing. So if I reach out to them offering the money, no way. I right, keep going, keep going. My bro, bad, my bad. even the house I live in, I bought it like that. I don't pay retail, bro. I don't pay retail. I'm buying a deal every single every single time I do it. I don't. I, it's against my my nature, right? So so like I'm married, right? My wife wanted to live in this town in Fort Lauderdale, and um, she was like, I want this area, but these homes are going for over a million dollars in there. I was like, I'm not trying to pay 1.5 million dollars for a house. So I said, Give me some time. I'll find you some, baby, right? 
And so, so I went out. I started reaching out to the foreclosure list. I found this one guy losing his house, beautiful 5,000-square-foot house in a gated community on a lake, right? Normally, that house would be over a million bucks, right? I paid 700000 for it because we came in, we came in 750. We came into an A-B conversation. The guy walked away with over $50,000 in his hands. Mm-hmm. We paid off the mortgage. No foreclosure, brother. Woo. At auction, that house would have gone for way more. Was that your first time, like, witnessing that, or you already knew that game? I've been, I've been doing it, man, for 15 years, brother. Damn, yeah. that's fire, bro. Yeah, man. So I guess like, all right, besides the uh people not knowing, sure. right? What is so that you just gave me one way to make some 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 real money is easy. When how long ago have you done that though? Just curious. What, my house? No, like uh I've been doing this for 10 years, reaching out to directly to sellers. So you still do the same thing? Still do the same thing today, just on higher volume, obviously. So break it down to me, like, cause now I'm thinking, I feel like you might be the first. I've heard real estate people tell me do that, but I they probably don't do that. Exactly. So what's the difference in different real estate agents or am I, I don't know if I'm or saying investors, that right. The investors, yeah, investors. Yeah, yeah. So the difference is, I told you, they ain't doing it. So they don't, they can't teach you how to do it, right? Right. So you can go read a book and try to teach somebody. It's never going to come out the same way if you've been doing it for the past 10 years, uh-huh. right? Or the past 15 years. So what most people do, like what you were just talking about, they go to the auction, they bid on the auction and they try to win a property. There's 20 properties and you got 300 people bidding, Yeah, right? Too much competition. Yeah, yeah. When you reach out to that seller six weeks before the auction, now you got an A-B conversation. But let me let me add one more piece to it, right? So it, you got to target the right kind of foreclosure. You got to target the right kind of seller, right? Um, if you do people behind on their property taxes, guess what? Most people behind on their property taxes don't have a mortgage on their property. So if I'm starting from a point of stress, I'm starting from how much you own your taxes, right? Because the bank typically pays the mortgage. Okay. If you got a mortgage payment, you pay your taxes, insurance, and your ta- and your mortgage payment. So the bank doesn't want the house to be sold and they, they lose their mortgage, right? So it almost never gets a tax auction. So if we're talking about somebody got a very low amount of debt, a lot of equity, and you got a whole lot of room to negotiate and get that house for a great deal. But if I got a low amount of debt, why would I sell my house? Like, cause like I don't got no but, too much debt. Yeah, but a lot of people don't even realize. Let's say you owe twenty thousand dollars in taxes, right? But your house is worth two hundred thousand dollars. All right. And if you can't pay the twenty thousand dollars, it's probably because there's some type of financial distress, mm-hmm. right? You're struggling. You might have lost a job, or maybe you know, um, so you got you know medical bills, whatever it is, right? So your mind is on I, I'm focusing on this thing, right? I'm I'm leaving this to to go bad, right? And this happens more and more often than not, right? So if I can come to you and say, hey, look, your tax auction is, you know, two weeks away from now, right? Are you going to let somebody kick you out your house and you're going to lose all your equity? Or let's save your situation. Maybe you don't have the money for the taxes. I'll pay the taxes and I'll give you $80,000 to put in your pocket so you can move on to your next situation. Now, I get that house for hundred grand. you are happy because you fixed your problem and you got your eighty grand to deal with whatever stress you're talking about. And guess what? That house is worth two hundred. dollars so I just got myself a good deal. Okay, so even if, I, if, even if I got a low amount of debt, but I still owe debt on my house, they'll take it. They'll still take it. That's they'll, fucked up. They'll take that house if you owe twenty thousand. It's worth half a million bucks. They don't care. No way. Yeah, bro. Yo, that's messed up though. That's just how. That's how it is. Do you feel bad? Um, I don't feel bad because I give them a fair price for the situation that's going on, right? And I give them a fair price for the condition of the home. A lot of times, a lot of times I got to re- renovate and, and and bring these homes to to what they are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't feel bad for that. Um. If I don't do what I do, guess what? Somebody else is kicking them out and calling the sheriff and, and evicting them from their own house. Yeah. Right? So I get to put money in that person's pocket. I get myself a great deal in, in the process. And, and right, I stop somebody from, from going to foreclosure and destroying their credit or destroying their, their you know, whole financial situation. Yeah, you're good at this. This is what I do, bro. <laughs> right? what, like, what made you, what, what was the first, like, light bulb that went off that was like, I need to do this? All right, yo, so... I, I, I'm I'm the I'm the Wall Street drops dropout real estate mogul, right? Wait, what? Say that they again? call me the Wall Street dropout turned real estate mogul. Okay, so, okay. You know, I went and I I'm a son of two immigrant parents, right? My mother's from Dominican Republic, my father's from Ethiopia, right? Both of them came to the U.S. and me and my brothers are the first one born in the states. Um, and so they came here. My dad was a taxi driver for 21 years, right? So they, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but they instilled in me hard work. Okay. I mean, so we went there. When my friends were out there playing basketball, they were making me read books, right? I was pissed at the time, but now I understand. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I went to school, you know, went to college, and then I w- got a job on Wall Street making six figures, bro. I was, I was making good money. So I, I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to work for somebody else and let somebody else determine my future, right, when I wanted to get married. And I, and I asked for, you know, two weeks off to go on a honeymoon. My boss told me, nah, we can't do that, right? We need you in the office. I was Jeez. like, what? 
screw this, man. Yeah, right? I'm slaving away for you, for you, and I can't, I can't, I can't get married. Fact. I can't take a honeymoon, right? So I was like, yo, never again am I gonna let somebody do. It. So cold turkey, I quit Wall Street, right? My my dad told me I was crazy. My mom told me I was crazy. Everybody was. My dad almost disowned me because he was like, he's like, no, you need, you you're de destroying your chance of becoming a millionaire, right? You, you're supposed to change the whole family, and so um, I did that, and I was like, I don't know what to do next. Mm. Right, so I went out and started selling cars, selling motorcycles, and 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 I, my brother, right, who's my business partner, he found the deal in Newton, New Jersey, and he was like, "Yo, this house gotta be worth more money." Right, we didn't know how to analyze it, we didn't know if it was really a deal. It was just an ugly house surrounded by pretty houses. Mm. And we like, he was like, "Yo, we gotta buy this." So I was like, "How are we gonna get the money for it?" I didn't have the money, I didn't have the credit, I didn't have any of that stuff at the time. So we were like, "You know what? You gonna make it work?" We put a thousand dollar deposit on the house, and he told you got sixty days to come up with the money. Right. So we, we started talking to everybody. I talked to my coworkers, talked to my friends, talked to my dad. My dad lent me five thousand dollars that he gave me some some of his savings. Right. Everyone. I, I pulled the money together. and We bought it for forty five thousand dollars. I got five thousand here, three thousand there, two thousand there. And I told everybody, told everybody, I'm going all in on this. This is what I want to do. We bought it for forty five K. We maxed out credit cards. My brother got a title advance on his car. Right. Um, so so we, we went all in on this house. We renovated this thing. Right. And then we found out with something called hard money. And so we got a loan also for the house as well. And we did the whole thing together. We did the house. We made $60,000. Mm. Right? We were like, oh, shoot. This works. Made 60, after y'all paid everybody back? Yeah. We bought it for forty five. dollars We put sixty dollars in rehab. And we sold it for one hundred dollars right? We pulled out $60,000 in profit on that deal. And we were like, yo, this works. Right? So we were like, yo, we about to be millionaires. Right? Yeah. Next deal, I lost everything. What? I lost $75,000 on it. Right? So we lost the sixty dollars we made. Plus, we were in the hole that owed people money, right? And we were like, yo, this is not how it's supposed to be. And my wife was pregnant, right? And so about, I have no job. My, I remember she had a conversation with my dad. My dad was like, you sure you want to be with this dude? He's unemployed and he just lost 75 Your dad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. He's joking, yeah. right? Okay, he's like, saying, he's, he's saying it to he my wife. He's cop block. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, so then um, she was like, she's like, yeah, nah, I, I, I believe in him. So so I, I was like, you know what? I, I did, clearly don't know what I'm doing, but I know this this works. I know that people are making a lot of money off this. I got to find somebody doing this. So I went and found somebody that had been doing it for years. Went under his wing, taught me how to taught me how to analyze the deal, taught me how to figure out what it's worth, taught me how to figure out what the repairs are. Bruh, right? Over the next three years, we did dozens of deals, right? And we just killed it. Learned how to raise money, right? Just have, by having conversations with people. And we killed it, man. I mean, that was almost 14 years ago now, right? Yeah. So I just told you I did over 1,300 deals in the past in the past 14 years. This mentor, so to say, did you have to pay him? I had to pay him some money. But I, you was broke at the but time. But I paid him in two things. One, I put some money on my credit card, right? So I still have a little bit of credit on it. And then the second, I told him when I do my first deal, I'm a, I got you, bro. How did he trust you? You already knew him? Like, I didn't know him personally, but he, he knew I was willing to work hard. Right. So we signed the contract, everything, of okay. course. Right. Um, and he helped me with that first deal. And off that first deal, I was able to pay him off um, on a whole balance. So are you into because I know you, you just get into the Internet thing. Yeah. And I know you got a, a challenge you about to do. We won't get into it. But like, are you doing mentorship now or? Absolutely. I started doing mentorships over the past couple months. And every single person that I've mentored. Right. That's been in my program for at least 30 days has closed their first deal. Damn. Every single person. I'm telling you, there's a difference between gurus and gurus. Ooh, right? Ooh, ooh, right? If I'm telling you, do this, do this, do this, and I guarantee you within the next 30 days, you're going to have a deal, right? It's because I've done it. I'm only teaching what I'm doing and what I do every day in our business. Damn. Yo, so, all right, all right. I know we got to make money, but I'm just like, Sometimes I be trying to do it for my people, right? Absolutely. How much you charge for your mentorship if you don't so mind? So there's different types of um mentorship. So it's anywhere from 297 all the way up to like to like 20,000, right? right? But it just depends on what how how much coaching you want, how close you want it to be and 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 what the commitment is on my end. So for the 20,000 other one, right? Yeah. Like How do you measure the level of success of the mentee? Is it that one closing? Um, it's, it's, For the 20, it's, it's a couple yeah. things. It's the one closing. I want to make sure that within their, our time working together, they make double what they pay me. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's my guarantee, right? That's that hard. I'm going to work with you until you double your investment with me. Right. And if, if you don't do it within the, within the 12 month time that you promise, I'll continue working with you forever until you do. Right. So I'm, I'm willing, I'm investing my time with you. Right. I'm investing my resources with you. For instance, I got one student right now in Chicago. Right. And, and so I went and paid for her marketing to get going so that she can have a deal in the next 30 days, mm. right? So I'm investing my resources, right, to, to, so that you're successful.
Damn, that's fire, bro. Bro, and, and I'm targeting our people, right? So I want to see as many of our people, you know, be successful. I want to see as many of our people get get out the grind, right? Mm -hmm. I want to I want to see them stop being a slave to corporate America. You know what I'm saying? And so, I mean, there's so many companies, so many companies out there, and so many people that that try to hold our people down, right? So the a lot of a lot of just think about it. Last year, right? Over 40% of the houses purchased in the United States were purchased by big corporations, mm. right? That's pushing people like us out the door. You know what I'm saying? That's keeping us landlords. Mm. That's keeping us um, tenants. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right? We don't get rich by being a tenant. You get rich by owning a house because the house appreciates. You get cash flow down the line. And then when you sell it, on, now you got money to invest, to open a business, whatever you want to do. Buy more real estate if you want to. So I'm trying to show, get as many of our people into, into um, home ownership as possible. Yo, so we I've seen this... Um this guy, yeah. he was connected with DJ Envy. I'm sure. pretty sure you've seen the, yeah, the whole thing that was going on, right? I feel like his idea was great. The idea was good, but the execution was bad, right? Uh -huh. um, so you're talking about, I know you're talking about Caesar Pina. Yeah, and, C and yep, DJ, Caesar, DJ yep, Envy, yep. Right? I think what probably happened, and again, I wasn't in the situation, is yeah, they course. had good intentions in the beginning, right? And then a deal went south, and they didn't know how to come out from come out from under that. Mm. Right, so they they raised a bunch of money. They sold people a lot of hopes, and they just didn't have the the skill set to execute mm. on on what they're doing. So what what what's nice about what, what what I do is that you're not giving me the money to buy a property for you. You're buying the property yourself, mm -hmm. right? So there's no level of of anything like that being able to happen, right? So he went and got a bunch of people to give him money to go out and buy real estate in Jersey and different places, right? Okay, I understand the, the know how that, be, but there's a lot of trust in that. You don't know what's going on in that person's personal life, right? But you, you own the property. You have the title to the property. All the benefits are yours. So that's that's where we differ. But I, I so I only ask that because I see somebody else doing something similar. Mm -hmm. And let me preface this because I don't know how she does it or sure. what the exact way. Mm -hmm. But I know I like Terika. I love like just from her story. I love this chick. I'm For not sure. gonna lie. I'm be real. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like she got like a a group of people that invest in like properties and like they get percentages of it. I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. So I'm trying to figure out why don't we all do that? And how can like Caesar, like how does that go wrong when all you got to do is just do the right thing? Of course. I mean, I know, yeah. I know we got bad people in the world, of but course. I don't like, so how can something it, go Do you wrong? like that though? Like that, that idea. I of, think the idea is great, man. Okay. Cause you own a little piece of something very big. Right. And then you get your exposure, you get, you learn and then, and, and then you get your, your feet wet right in the game. So I think it's, I think the idea of it's good. If you have a strong operator, then absolutely. Right. But these guys were selling dreams and not executing on the dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Right. I heard stories about people investing in land to develop uh, and then the thing never got developed. Right. But the money's gone. Okay. So, so if they had, if they were able to execute, then by all means. So anytime you're going to, you're, you're trying to talk to a guru, anytime you're trying to, someone's trying to get you to invest in, in a portfolio or, or some type of development, ask that person, show me your HUDs, mm. right? Show me your HUDs. A HUD statement is like, is, is what's given by the closing company when you buy or sell a house, right? When you actually do a deal, show me HUDs, show me 10 HUDs you did in the last 24 months, mm. right? If you ain't got HUDs, it means you ain't really in the business, he ain't doing this. So would you ever do that? Eventually, I, I know you doing something else I'll right now. I'll show all my HUDs, bro. But not even the HUDs. I'm saying like have like a group of people invest in like different um, like so, houses or the buildings. Answer's, answer's yes. I would do it, right? But I truly believe that everyone deserves the opportunity to do it themselves too. Mm. If I do it for you, you don't learn anything. Or you give a fish, you give a teach a man a fish, right? He'll eat forever. You give him a fish, he eats only once, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to teach people how to do this so I they act, can go out and repeat it themselves. Not to cut you off. I'm sorry. I only ask that yeah. because like you have people who are lazy, right? Because I'm assuming it seems like it took a lot of work. You ain't just of course, man. It wasn't a cakewalk, bro. The, 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 real estate is not a get rich quick scheme, right? Yeah, you don't become rich from one day to another. It takes work, right? Right. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that. That you know they're always checking the clock when they're at their job, right? Because maybe they don't like what they're doing, or they just don't, or they're lazy, or like you said, you know, people that, that might be lazy, and 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 they're always checking the clock to see when it's time to get out. But then they wonder, right, why they got to check the bank statement every time they want to buy something. You going crazy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. You got to put the work in. Either you're gonna put the money up, or you're gonna put the work. And in. And that's where I was going with it. So like you might nowadays, sure, you have you see we see more more of African American Latinas having money, right, mm -hmm. and. I was wondering, like, yo, if you got somebody that got the money and they like, yo, I just want to invest. Yeah. Like, would you would you do something like that? Yeah, I would do it. I would definitely do it, but I would do it in a transparent way, right? Yeah. So if you're going to give me, call it 
$100,000 to buy a property because you got savings, right? Let's do that $100,000 together, and that's one property. You see the property. You see the deed of the property. You know where your money's at, mm -hmm. right? Versus like, all right, I'll take 100000 here, 50000 there, hundred grand here, and I got a million dollars together, and we go out, and, we, and, and I'm going to buy whatever I want. It's called the blind fund, right? Mm -hmm. So I want, I, want, I want you to know what your mon where your money's at at all times. Okay, okay. So that's the difference, right? Is a hundred like the starting point? Like shit. No, nah, it could be less than a hundred, man. I, I mean, bro, we do deals. We do deals with no money out of pocket all the time. Okay. Right. So we could structure a deal where there's where ten thousand, twenty thousand, right? There's no minimum amount to get in the game, right? So the it, it's it's about how you structure the deal. What's worth it though? Because I like let's for example. Well, I'm getting that for the for the viewers that might be watching, right? They might not have a hundred, or they might just know somebody who's a real estate agent. Absolutely, yeah. And they like, yo, like, why well, five my friends, we can get Five ten thousand dollars. Like, I feel like we should be seeing this yeah, often. Absolutely, absolutely. Get out there, do it. Right, just got to do it. But that's the problem. A lot of people don't want to do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm across my eyes. Cause no, 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 we gonna have a good. Now we about to get some real game. Like you probably never had nobody do no shit like Let's this. Let's do boy. it. We about to get some real game. I, so I got this real estate agent, right? Okay. He he he's based in Baltimore. Okay. And I tell him like, yo, like, why don't just four of us just get some money? You you the real estate agent. You get the spot. And we and he like, bro, it's not that simple. So he's a real estate agent. So he knows how to buy and sell properties for other people. Right? Mm -hmm. Does not every real estate agent knows how to buy and sell properties the right way as an investor, right? Most real estate agents are targeted towards retail people. Somebody wants to go and buy a house because they want to live in it for the next ten years, mm -hmm. right? It's a different system if you're targeting investors that are looking to cash flow on rentals or you're looking for investors that are trying to flip something. Right? When you flip something, you need margin. You need you need to get it cheap, right? You need to target distressed properties, right? Not every real estate agent is an expert in that. Okay, hold up, hold up, because this is going, this is going to only add to the conversation. That's fire. Yeah, now, sure. this is, see, I told you this is game, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is real. Hold Try up. It. No, no, you going there. You going there. He said, he said, most people that be, that, they, that, that check the, hold up, bro. Most people that check the clock wonder why they got to check, check their face. <laughs> yeah. Yo, bro, so look, yo, you're my, you're my podcast live, bro. I'm with, um, I got a real estate investor, Siam si here. Yeah. And I was like, I know a real estate agent. And I'm like, why don't, uh, like, I know a real estate agent. Why every time I ask him, like, I, we got five friends, we trying to all put up and get a crib. It's like you like, um, it's not as simple as as you think. Tell me your challenges. Why wouldn't you? Why why don't you do that more often? Just curious. Look, put together five people. Yeah, five friends buy property and we just flip it. Because everybody got their own mindset. Everybody got their own way of they want to do things. Uh, some people want to be hands off. Some people want to be hands on. There's a lot of personalities to put together. Like I wouldn't probably be five i mean unless all five of us had the exact same mindset bro and eight out of ten times we probably not you feel me one person gonna want to go this way one person gonna want to go that way but you can find three people with the same mindset why not do that i'm just trying because i got to get back to the conversation just curious no i would do the three i would do the three you feel me like i would do the three but we're gonna have to understand like all right who's podcasting i will follow your lead because you've been doing it longer than me uh-huh you feel so me so yeah, I'm putting my money up, but I also need to listen to you because... Is this hesitation I'm, finding a good deal? Is you that got one? people that put their money up and okay. now they want to control because of what they heard and things like that. And it's kind of difficult. So is your hesitation about finding a good deal or finding the, the three people that all mess together? The three people that all mess together. We can always find a deal. Okay. All right. Thank you, bro. I'm going to holler at you later. All right. all right. I just feel like... That's my dog, first of all. I ain't going to say For his name. Sure. But I feel like... It still gives reluctant because like it's I think it's come on man. So it's 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 it so it's also his mindset too, right? Uh -huh. His mindset is everything gotta be perfect to mm -hmm. to do it. So I'm a big believer is that you take you take a leap of faith and you figure it all out later, right? It all kind of comes together. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So if you if you got Are you feeling this way? Not to cut you off, are you feeling this way because you got the money now? Think of back when you was broke when you had no money. Are you yeah. still thinking that? Absolutely, bro. Okay. You still got to jump. When I did that first job, I went all in. Yeah, yeah, Either yeah. it was going to succeed. Well, other people money too. <laughs> yeah, other people <laughs> money, money too. Crazy. Even my dad's money, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so like, so it's, it's either going to fail, right? And we we're all you know shit out of luck, or it's going to do good. And uh -huh. so, luckily, it went it went good on that deal, right? So, I'm a, if you put your money, you put your effort, you bet on yourself, you're always going to come out on top, man. Right? Mm. It may not come out the first time, it may not be the second time, but eventually, you come out on top. All right, so we about to have some fun. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say the name because I don't want to throw my guys out there. But I, I know somebody. I don't want to say friend. Let's use that word. But he, I, I like him. He's cool, and he don't like real estate. He used to do real estate, but now he do like self storage now, mm -hmm. and he like promotes self storage real heavy. Like man, real estate. Uh. Mm -hmm. and I feel like everybody's always different type of real estate. Sure. Because I mean, self storage is still real estate, but he's like, um, 
flipping houses and things like, like houses that. And stuff, yeah. yeah. Why would you think flipping a house is better than like self storage or all other types of real estate? So I think self storage is great. It's actually commercial real estate, right? It's okay. actually a great way, but I think that's later on down the line, right? So when I told you about like how people should start, I think everyone should start um, wholesaling. You learn how to analyze deals, you learn how to do it, but you could wholesale self storage centers too. Right. And then once you've mastered that, you got some money, right? Then you move on to fix and flip. And you get some bigger checks, twenty five, thirty, fifty thousand dollar checks, you know, doing fix and flips. And once you master that, you go to the next thing, whether you want to do apartment buildings or self storage centers, because they take a lot more money to do them, right? And okay. Self storage centers not fifty K or hundred K or one fifty. They're two million, five million, ten million dollars. Same thing with multifamily. Same you know, either ten million, nine million, twelve million dollars. So so it's just a progression. Okay. Right. So I don't think that one is better than the other. I think one leads to the next one. All right. I do this a lot. You can say no, but don't say no. Yeah, yeah. We we live on camera. Absolutely, bro. If they watch this episode for this long, can you give one person something? We can make it hard. We gotta make them do something, right? But can we give one person a mentorship, free mentorship? Yeah, I'll do it. One, if they it. watch this long, right? Uh, let's say they got to go under. We're going to have three different collab posts, right? Comment under one of the three collab posts why you should get the uh, uh, mentorship. Follow S Salim. I said it right? Siam. 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 I'm sorry. Follow Siam. Say why you should get the uh, the um, mentorship. And then we're going to pick one person. I'm going to give one $20,000 mentorship away, right? And in that, I'm a sh you're going to close anywhere from two to three deals within your first six months with me, whether you got money or not. That's my commitment. I'm not sending this out to y'all. So you got to watch it. So I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not about to hit my friends. You got to watch it. That's crazy. That's fire, bro. So thank you, first of all. My, pl my pleasure, man. Um, All right. So you got this uh challenge you're about to do with Carter, right? Yeah. What is it? Yeah, man. So it's a five-day challenge, mm -hmm. right? It's going to be in September. And that challenge is going to be five days of just immersing ourselves in real estate. And body. so after five days, you're going to learn how to analyze a deal. After five days, you're going to learn how to, how to you know, analyze any market in the country and decide if that market's for you and how you want to implement your real estate business. After five days, I'm going to teach you our, our eight-figure entity setups so that you can set up, have your business set up just like us and, you know, reduce any, reduce your risk or liability, reduce what you pay to Uncle Sam and know all the different write-offs you can take into account that allows you to pay the least amount of taxes, even though you're making a lot of money in real estate, right? Mm. Um, it, after five days, you're going to learn how to analyze a deal, how to have our same tools that we use to analyze deals. And after five days, we're actually going to look at real deals, analyze them together, right? And if you want to buy one of those deals, you're more than welcome to, maybe it might be one of your first deals. Damn. How much is, that, how much is the uh, challenge? It's two ninety seven, bro. Like $300? $300. $300, Damn. you get a whole week with me and my team. That's fire, bro. Yeah. Yo, I'm asking, and it's just from um, me learning now. Why do, um, why the challenges? Why do so many entrepreneurs do the challenges? Just curious. Um, it's because it's a, it's a, it's a, you get a lot of people together for a short period of time. Uh, some people are, are, are scared to commit to long, long periods of time. So, you know, three months, six months, 12 months. But most people say, all right, I'll give it a week. Right. And in a week, you know, if you like it or not, mm. if this is something for you. Okay. Right? So you, people commit a small amount of time. It's usually not a, a big, a big cost. Right. And then you can try, try to give as much value information that week as possible. By the end of that week, you will have all the resources, all the tools, all the systems to go out there and buy your first deal. Now I'm being selfish. Now, this is not for the consumer. Yeah, yeah. This is for me. But like from an entrepreneur side of it. Right. Like what's the benefit for me if I get like a lot at a, a small number, I can make a lot of money. Like, how does it work? Like, what's the benefit? No, it's, 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 you get to touch as many lives as possible. So you get to touch as many people as possible. That ain't the real reason. But it is the real reason for me. All right. It, you get to touch as many people as possible. If I can, if I can get a hundred people in the room, right. On a challenge and I can get, I can change a hundred people's lives. It all, I believe in karma, man. It all, start, it all comes right back. Right. You know what I'm saying? If, if that week is, is impactful for you, go out there and you close a deal, you come back to me when you want to take things to the next level. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes that's, sense. That's 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 where it comes. See, I'm thinking like maybe like all right, if I if I could just get a hundred people at a smaller number, then I will make that bigger number in the yeah, in that the long works run. Too. I I don't make any money on the challenges, right? Really? Yeah, I don't make any money. On We're spending money on ads. We're spending money on on getting. So okay. That's just recouping what you spent on on that stuff. Okay. Right. Again, it's because if people do well, they get success out of that week. Then they want to work with you longer on their next when they want to take things to the next level. Okay, so it's almost like marketing yourself too, almost. Absolutely, right? and it's, it's like a reason to market. Absolutely, you put yourself out there. Oh, that's fire! You put yourself out there, bro. Damn, was you? So when you say you wasn't on the internet, 
was that a part of when we say internet? Is that a part of internet stuff like challenges and things like that? Or you I, was doing I, that too? I didn't post or anything for for forever. I opened up my Instagram in 2021, mm -hmm. right? And I had probably maybe 10, 15 posts between 10, 2021 and the end of 2023, mm. right? So I only really started putting myself out there, you know, this year. So you wasn't doing mentorship, you weren't doing challenges, nothing like that. Nah, I did informal mentorships because people knew I was in the business. Mm -hmm. People would say, "Hey, man, can you show me this? Can you help me this?" And I actually taught. Tons of people like that, right? Um, but making it official, making it formal, not since the beginning of this year. What was the light switch for that? Like that, because I'm pretty sure if you wasn't doing it, many people probably suggested it. But yeah. what was the final switch? Like, so right. yeah, absolutely. So people always ask me, "Hey, how did you build?" I mean, I didn't even tell you all my information, right? So we've done over 1,300 deals, and I built a rental portfolio today, right, with over 600 properties that, that me and my brothers own, and it's valued over 80 million dollars. Damn. Right. So people ask, how'd you do that? How'd you come to that? You didn't have money. To be, how did you do this? Um, can you show me how to do this? Can you do this? And so constantly getting hit up, asked, I go to these networking meetings. Everybody knows who I am in, in, in South Florida. Right. We're in Cleveland or Columbus. And they're like, yo, can you show me this? And I was like, yeah, we, we've been saying we should make something official. about it. I, could, I should definitely make something official. And we decided to make something official. Oh, wow. Damn. So the, tell me about the rental properties. Do you like that? Or yeah. how, how, what's the what's your structure behind that? You yeah, still. Absolutely. Hands on or so yeah, we're still pretty much hands on, but I got a whole team behind me before that now. Um, so we built up. I like buying rental properties where we own them with very little money invested into them long term, right? So we like to buy these properties um, at a discount to market value. We renovate them, then we refinance them, and we get cash flow in them on a monthly basis going forward. So I love rentals because they appreciate over time, right? They cash flow, and you get what's called depreciation. So if you're making money doing your fix and flipping, doing your new construction, your wholesaling, you get to reduce what you pay on that just by owning real estate. Damn. So you get to pay less in taxes just by owning a property. I heard about that. Yep. So what about, what do you think my homie, um, he just got a house, like a, a fourplex or whatever, yeah. and um, he has a program where they put people in there. Mm -hmm. I guess they're like, they don't make a lot, but sure. they they kind of help. Damn. They kind of help pay for it. Uh -huh. um, let me get that. Okay. Uh, Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, so I got a friend who owns a um property. It's like a fourplex, quadplex or whatever, something like that, however you say it. And he's working with like the state, I think, where they put people in there who might not have jobs or whatever, and um they kind of like cover it. Mm -hmm. Do you suggest that? Or Absolutely. do you think that's a good idea? I think that's a great way. Those those are like sober living houses uh -huh. or like um, people halfway houses, people coming out of jail. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff like that. So I think I think that's a great cause and it's a great way to make money and it's guaranteed rent, which is nice. Right. Um, I love a subsidized housing. That's what it's called. Yeah, subsidized yeah. housing. So we do a lot of Section 8 properties. That, that's another way of getting money from the government to cover the people's rent. We, I, we do Section 8 properties. And I think it's actually phenomenal. I highly recommend every investor incorporate that into their portfolio. Right. So... And I mean, it's pretty like I read a stat that over the next couple of years, over three million people are going to lose their job due to AI. Mm. Right. So all these all these big companies, all these big billionaires, they're, they're investing all this money in tech and robots and in, in stuff that's going to replace regular people's jobs. Mm -hmm. So I believe you need to go out there and you need to just buy a property. You need to go out there. You need to become your own your own boss, determine your own fate. Right. Um, and. As a, and as a result of that, I also believe the properties you buy, you should be putting Section 8 people in there because the government's always going to pay that rent, right? Okay. And and on my Section 8 properties, you have you don't have collection risk. When you when I rent to you, whether you have a job today, it doesn't mean you're going to have a job tomorrow. Facts. Right? So you lose that job tomorrow, you lose your ability to pay that rent. Now me and you are in a, in a situation where we're not on the same page anymore, right? We had an agreement. Um, and I, I hate evicting people. I hate being that kind of guy, but it's a business. You know what I'm saying? So, But when you have Section 8, that money gets deposited on the fifth or the fourth, whatever your agreement is, every month, like clockwork. See, I see other like um uh uh not tenants, but um landlords that I've spoken to said they don't like that because the type of people they bring in and they mess up Man, your your property. That's 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 all cap, bro, right? So a lot of these landlords, they believe that black people don't deserve to to have good homes, right? Mm -hmm. And so and so um it's all cap, right? If you treat somebody right, if you let them know up front that what your expectations are, people will usually follow through. Those same people 
right? If you report it to Section 8 that they destroyed your property, they lose their Section 8 voucher. Now they don't get that assistance anymore. Mm. You think if you, if you have that conversation up front, they're not going to try to save that mm. because then they have to now have to go out, get a job and, and work harder to cover the rent. Right now they got the rent covered, right? So it's... So yes, that's a, a, a risk. Yes, that's a possibility. But that's why you get security deposits. That's why you have the conversation up front to prevent that kind of stuff, mm. right? And that's why you you screen the person as well. If you saw they got they got kicked out of the last four places because they destroyed the home, I'm not putting that person in my house, right? Right. So you got to screen them all as well. I don't know. T- I don't know a lot. Right. I'm learning about real estate. Yeah. What's something I'm missing? That I'm not. I'm not hitting on. Like, what do you mean? Like a question I'm not asking because I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, this you giving me game now. All right, so let me see. What do you mind asking that you not that you not knowing? I, I think for someone that's brand new that wants to just get their feet wet and try a real estate deal, right? I would tell them I would tell them the following. All right, because you only know what you know, right? Yeah, you yeah. don't know what you don't know, right. and so the more you learn, the more you earn. So like, what I would tell them to do is go out there and go to their local tax office and find all the people that are losing their home according for taxes, right? And I would go out there and I would text message all those people. I'd invest 50 bucks in door hangers. If you've ever seen, they put on the front of the doors and put a door hanger on all those homes, mm-hmm. right? And if you have 100 people that are losing their houses next month in, in your county, then and you put 100 door hangers, you text message 100 people, right? You will get 25, 30, 50 responses on those messages, on to that marketing. And those 25, 30, you'll have 25 probably, you'll have half of those be meaningful conversations and you'll more than likely buy at least one deal, mm. right? Whether you want to buy it yourself that's fine. But if not, you can at least wholesale that deal, right? Make a five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar check, right? And then take that money and reinvest it into more marketing. So the next time now you got two or three deals coming in from that same fifteen thousand dollar check. Mm. Right. So that's how I tell somebody brand new to how to get started. So somebody that's been in the game, because you've been in the game for a minute now, but to the other real estate investors that's in the game, what's one thing you think they're overlooking that they don't speak on enough? I think I think the one thing that a lot of people are afraid of is they're like, how am I going to get the money for a deal, right? No, you, investors that's already been in the game. Oh, though, it's already That they might the be overlooking. Like, what's one thing that you see they make a lot of, like, like when you came up here, you say, you know, one girl, she only did 10 deals and she's going to start coaching. Like, what's some something that you probably see somebody, they've been probably been doing real estate investing for 10 years, mm-hmm. but you see a lot of these people just don't get this part that you went in. Yeah. I, I still, a lot of people that have been in the business for a long time, I think they only look at they think that you have to invest in your backyard, right? Mm-hmm. So I live in Fort Lauderdale, but only a fraction of the deals that I do are in Fort Lauderdale. Bro, right now, I just I just partnered up and we bought we bought 40 acres around the city of Atlanta, Damn. right? We about to build 4,000 apartments over the next 10 years, right? Jeez. And I did all that with zero of my own money, right? So I raised the money. There's more money out there than you will ever need for your business. Some people think if I want to go buy a deal, it needs to be my money. No, it doesn't. There's a lot of money out there and money sitting in the bank is losing money, mm. right? So if you can present somebody with an opportunity to make 8%, 10%, 12% of their money or 15 or joint venture where you make 50-50 on a deal, that's a win-win for both parties, mm. right? So a lot of people hold back their, their growth for two reasons. One, because they think they have to be in their backyard. The entire world is your playground, man, if you know how to do this game, right? You can do deals in Rome if you want to do deals in Rome. You can do deals in Zimbabwe if you want to do deals in Zimbabwe. Do deals in London. Do deals in New York. Do deals in LA, right? So there's a lot of deals that they don't see just because they're, they're fixed on only doing it in their backyard. That's mm. one. The second thing is people think that they need to use their money to do deals, which stops them from doing more deals, right? And that's all cap right there. And I think, honestly, from listening to you, I, I don't know, but just assuming the way people think, maybe they think they need to get it right now. Because you just say, I'm yeah. about to do this in the span of 10 years. Yeah. And I'm like, that's really thinking in the future and, stop, yeah. and not just thinking right now. Exactly. Damn. Exactly. You want to invest in yourself. So that you so that you take the actions now, right? Take the actions now. Go out, get started. Do your first deal. Do everything so that your future self will thank you, mm. right? So don't say it's always tomorrow. Is there's always a possibility that tomorrow may never come. There's always a possibility that that you know something happens in life and it derails you and go you go a different way, right? But take action now, right? With the with with future intention, if that makes sense. So take mm. an action now so that you get the benefit in the future and. That's, the, that's what happens with rental properties. You buy rental now, you don't make a bunch of money now. You make little drips. But guess what? Five years from now, I can almost guarantee that rental property is worth more then than it was today. Mm. Right? Um, you fix and flip and you do one flip now. All right? You get your feet wet. You, get, you try it. But guess what? Five years from now, guess what? You might be doing five, ten flips at the same time. 
right? And you, and you really rake it in the bucks. Okay. So slow but steady growth. There's more money out there than you'll ever need to do your de- deals, right? So go out there and start having conversations and raising capital to increase your real estate business and the entire world is your playground. Bro, this is fire, bro. I hope you really uh, keep your word with the uh, mentor. I, I, will, I will do it. I, know, I might have to watch this and then make the call. <laughs> like, <laughs> God damn. Like, I put shit. it out there, man. I, I, I put it out there. I will honor that. Bro, this is good, bro. I, uh, I wish you nothing but success. Thank you, man. Um, it seems like you're very genuine. Um, man, I hope everything works out for you, bro. I mean I that for it, man. For the people that don't know, let them know how to follow you, how to support the, the challenge and Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. So follow me on IG, on Instagram. My It's it's I am, I A M dot Siam, S A Y A M. So I am dot Siam. All right, follow me on IG. I'm always posting stuff. Um, I'm only now starting a YouTube page, yeah. right? Never had it before because I'm just getting online now, mm-hmm. right? So um, get get on me on, on IG and I'll share the information for the YouTube page. I give out great game every single day mm. i'm posting stuff every almost every day on instagram and what i'm posting is real facts yeah. and it's stuff that's actionable that you can go out and actually do the stuff too now well we're going to do some um collab posting then i'm gonna probably try to get you the whole video so you can get somebody to chop that's that's the game now like yeah. you get the video you have somebody for sure do a thousand clips for real yeah and then yeah you'll have that content appreciate that nah bro i appreciate you man mr j hill j hill podcast i am this is Man, if you ain't learned nothing from this, you need to open your eyes, open your ears, man. <laughs> it's a wrap. We out. Let's go.